there. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember the question because well, Gimbal's rude and interrupted. But how do you feel being um, here a year after um, your last SAT? Yeah, I mean it's certainly different. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I was able to uh, come participate um, during the last event here. Um, it's always uh, been a, been a great place for me to visit. I've had a lot of a lot of success and a lot of a lot of memories in this building. Um, so I was I was happy to kind of see the the, the, the crowd turn out tonight. You know, it felt like a a collective goodbye almost. And so I was I was happy to have been asked to uh, to come share in that a little bit. Could you reflect on this tournament? I mean, what it's meant to you or what you think the tournament's meant? Well, it's been great. I mean, it was always, you know, it, it was always, it was just always on the schedule. It was never, it was never, never a question. It, it, just, it just made so much sense for me, um, you know, selfishly and, and, and on, a, uh, on a, on a level of just feeling comfortable somewhere and, and enjoying playing there. And, um, you know, it, it, at first, it was, you know, I remember my first memories of playing, you know, the matches after Andre. You know, I, I was always, I was always working the late nights, and then finally I got the first night match. <laughs> and then, you know, it was, it was kind of a process, but it was, um, you know, it's, it, it's been a, it, it's been a place that I've, uh, I've certainly enjoyed since I've come to. I think we all deserve, we all should take a second to realize what Barry McKay built here mm -hmm. and how hard he worked and to, to be a tournament that that fans enjoy, that players enjoy, that players appreciated, where they were appreciated, what he built here, what this tennis, what this tournament has meant to this area. Um, and then Bill Raff worked very hard and, and did an excellent job in a different way. And then just in one year, I mean, what Mike Blair and his team did, I mean, assembling this field uh, this year. Um, and the final tomorrow will be, uh, it's sad that the tournament's leaving. It's a sad time in American tennis in a lot of ways, losing this tournament in, in Los Angeles. But uh, tomorrow with Raonic, who's never lost a set here amazingly against Tommy Haas, who's an old school player. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a sad loss of the tournament, but uh, really that, that, that video, I'm a real class act for them showing that Barry McKay tribute there at the end. I mean, he's one of the true, true good people in tennis. Tough to find someone who's gone through that long in tennis where you can't find one person to say a negative word about him. And um, you know, and this group has shown here, Mike Lair and, and Peter Wyndham and his staff have shown that even in a short period of time, that they really know how to run a tournament. That they they were able to assemble those three great champions, get that crowd there, the field that they got, and then now moving that to to uh, the here to Memphis as a 250, and, and have a lot of confidence as a, as a representative for the tour that they'll do an incredible job there. Um, so I think those three things deserve to be noted, those three different generations of people, of groups running this event. And you've been the main man for American tennis for a decade and you're on the board. What, what in a real way can be done to, to deal with the situation where we've lost two ATP tournaments here in California and, and can they be, be brought, brought back in any way? The reality is, unfortunately, the business model is very tough. I mean, we have to be honest. Uh, there were it's an inverse model, unfortunately. I mean, they had we had such a great run for so long, but the reality is, Andy's the last American male that's won a Grand Slam singles title in 2003, and the sports become more international, and it's very tough at this level, this schedule, and this calendar for to get the type of talent that they're accustomed to seeing, and then being able being able to remunerate that. This is just, this is just, just economics. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. And, and Justin probably has a better sense of the. Definitely has a better sense of the day in day out. You know, I think that there has to be some some stuff that has to change. You know, I, I think seeing what's going on with with Indian Wells is ridiculous. I mean, they, the if, money. if you if you're someone who wants to get involved in tennis and you see that they won't let people give money to the sport, what's your what's your motivation to to jump in? Mm -hmm. Um, Ray Moore says it's anti-competitive and anti-American. Ray Moore's right. Um, he's definitely right on this issue. I mean, I think it, it, with the reality is you can't you can't be incentivized people like Larry Ellison to put money into the sport. You can't lower the bar. You have to raise the bar. You have to you have to decide what's the bigger picture. I mean, at the LA, I mean, the tournament in LA, there's no there's no way that could, the tournament could survive there. It needs to be 
the week before in New Wells, and New, it means to be Northern California, LA, and then in New Wells. I mean, I, I deal with this stuff all the time. I know it can't you can't snap your fingers and do it, <clears throat> but you have to either look macro, or you either have to work backwards from a long-term goal, or this trend is going to continue. And if you look at the terms that are being successful, are having success in the U.S., uh, there's there's a reason why. It's either the calendar works out that way, or it's a niche market, whether it's an emotional sponsor or something, or it's buying a time. But the reality is, in America, people are need, expect a certain level, and they've gotten it for so long with the Roddicks and San Francisco and Agassiz and Couriers and Changs, and it's just the business model is broken at this level, and there's and it's no one's fault. They've done an excellent job here and other events. It's just it's just tough to overcome. Yeah. The other thing I would say um, on, on that is is the model of, of this two fifty five hundred mandatory events. Um, well, I'll give you an example from, from one of my last years. In 2010, so you, you count two 250 tournaments on your ranking. I won in Brisbane, and I made the finals here. And so that took us to mid-February. So in essence, to play, to play a 250 and to make any points to put in five or six matches, I would have had to win the entire event. If I make a final, I don't get a point. So, what's my motivation to play a 250 from that point on? Or we change that rule. Fine, but I'm saying these, yeah, are, exactly these, these, are, the, these are decisions we have to get away from. Because, you know, by 250s having to shell out for, you know, those couple of years, it, it, I, I think it put a serious dent in it. But I do have to say, Justin doesn't get enough credit for the work he does for the players and, and, and for everyone behind the scenes. He's really kind of... You know the glue that glue that's holding it together, and uh, I hope I hope that's noted and acknowledged, and uh, you know I hope he gets more control and, and, and more say so moving forward. Thank you. Uh, on another note, Andy, could you uh, talk about a match or two at this tournament that was particularly memorable for you? Yeah, um, I remember. It seems like I was I always had one match early in a tournament here where I was in big trouble, <laughs> you know, and I would kind of scrap my way out of it. And, get through. I remember one against Sanguinetti. I remember, gosh, I, I'm trying to remember all the different matches. Uh, you know, playing Marty in the final here was pretty cool. Um, you know, uh, you did Cyril Solney in the final on 104. You did Marty in the final 6-3. Yeah, in 04 was Marty was the tiebreaker at a long time. Right? What? Oh. Who's right? Well, so he, he, yeah, he was throwing out years. You were just throwing I wasn't going year. I was just going out the night. He, he beat Seven. Sonny in the final 0-4. He beat Marty in the final 6-3. and three. I remember getting drilled by Andre here one time, too. <laughs> like 3 0 twos, 3 and 3-1. Three and um, you know, there's just, a, there's just a lot of finals. I, I remember letting it go against Verdasco in the 2010 final. I'd been playing horribly the entire tournament and somehow just... Trashed my way to the final. Two six and, seven and, six seven six eight. And query in the semis. Yeah, I had won. <laughs> I think consecutive matches just on 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 trash, and then uh, I get out in the finals in 2010 and actually played well. And when that happened, I didn't know what to do with myself, <laughs> and uh, let him get out of it. But I, you know, I, I feel like there are a lot of matches I shouldn't have won here, and that one that one I probably should have. That year you beat Haas in the quarters five and three. You won the first inning for Jazz. You need six four in the you third. Need, the you, final. Need, you need a hobby. Dude. <laughs> 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 you need like Andy, obviously the the top four are in a real incredible place of domination. But in terms of the next tier or up and comers, I don't know, Bert, Burdich, Sanga, Delpo, Brownich. Who, who do you think if you had to pick one to break through? Who, who do you think has the best shot? Break through, like what do you mean? Breakthrough and win a slam. Who's? I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think we know. There's, there's a lot of problems, and I, you know, I, I went from being the two, you know, two guys that are talking about going to slam to three to four to all of a sudden you're eight. You got to go through three of those guys, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're nine through sixteen, and all of a sudden there's four of them. You know, and that that's not including getting through the first week and and, and, and surviving. So. Um, I'm not going to pick one because I don't see it happening. Um, you know, with, with a lot of the guys you named, I think we know what, what we have right now. Um, you know, uh, to get through one and then all of a sudden, let's say they get through, you know, whoever, then they, I don't see any of them going, you know, Rafa, Murray, Fed, you know, and then Djokovic in a row. You know, and, 
you know, I think each one of those guys has as good a chance as, as the other one, but uh, I wouldn't bet it. And Ron, let's just talk about him for a minute. Could he be a dominant player in, I don't know, five, six years? We'll talk about his tools and his prospects, please. Five, six years? I mean, that's a long time. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, he's going to be in any match because he's able to serve. Um, but in order to kind of consistently go, you've got to have something a little more than that. And I think, uh, you know, uh, we know we know he's a top 15 player. We know that for sure. And now it's a matter of kind of making a run of a slam. I'm not sure if we see him in a fourth round yet. So that's what we know so far, you know. And, and, and there's going to be, I, I think, one of the things that's tough, and I ran into it late in my career, is that guys are returning better and better and better. And they're able, able to get into points. And I think that's when people can, can expose them. And uh, that became more and more of the norm for me. All of a sudden, you know, there was, when I started, there was Andre Layton who could return my serve consistently. Then all of a sudden, by the end, there's 15 guys who could get a racket on it, put it in court. And then once we're neutral, they liked, they liked where they were at the point. And I think he's going to, uh, and you're not going to see, a, you know, with the exception of the U.S. Open, you're not going to see, you know, a, a slam tournament that he can run through on serve alone. So it's, it's, it's going to be tough. And it, it's no disrespect to him. I just think those... Those four guys are significantly better than everybody else right now. Andy, you like your golf, and you've recently played a pro-am. Any chance we'll see a new career for you now that you've retired from tennis? <laughs> the one thing I know about sports from having been decent at one is that it's not easy. And I, I love it when people say, like, you know, I was going to be a pro baseball player, but then I you know, decided to get, no, one, no one chooses not to do it. You know, so it's, <laughs> it's uh, you know, it, if you get the chance and you're good enough, you do it. But that's, it's, uh, it's. I wish it was easy, as easy as making a choice. It's, it's certainly not. It's, 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 it's too tough, but uh, I certainly enjoy playing. You don't hear a lot of, gosh, I'm so pumped to be selling insurance. I'm glad <laughs> I yeah, I passed up that baseball career. <laughs>